Well, look who has returned to CBS. Stacy Keach, Mickey Spillane's Mike Hammer, hard-hitting private eye. And of course, Mickey Spillane's Mike Hammer always has to wear a hat. I mean, it wouldn't be right without it. Are you going to wear your hat all the time, Stacy? Not all the time, but enough of the time that, you know, it'll um, keep people who really see my camera in terms of that hat. I got to tell you a funny story. When I started my camera, I got a box in the mail from Mickey Spillane. And there was a note inside saying, wear this. And this was his pork pie hat. And of course, I put it on my head. It was about two sizes too small, so I had to fuss with it and make it work. So but that's Mickey Spillane's hat, the real one that you're wearing it in? Well, it's it's a, now it's a little it's not the actual hat we we had to find. Yeah, to update it probably because bit. that was a 1950 snap brim hat. Well, no, that's the same. I mean, we, he does wear that same hat. Uh, I mean, uh, in terms of you know style, that's very fashionable today. I mean, those hats are coming back. It's amazing, uh, and the trench coat, of course, and um, the cigarette. And hanging that's out. the cigarette. But now, my, Even, Okay. I was going to say, we've changed, we've, we've tempered his character a little bit in that he's trying to quit smoking, as I am. Um, but my camera is trying to quit. He never does, of course, because uh, that would violate the integrity of the character, but he's trying awfully hard. Well, you know, I shouldn't say never. He might. If, we, if we're lucky enough to run for a while, who knows? Well, Stacy, you look so good. Well, I you. said unto myself, he doesn't smoke. Yeah. Oh, but he's going to have to smoke as, as a Mike Hammer. Now, that's going to be really interesting to find out that you really do smoke after all. Yeah. But you, when I, the last time I saw you uh, for the Blue and the Gray, right. you were a little round, shall we say. Yes, I was a little rounder. Yes. Rounder, yes. yes. And now you're looking terrific. What have you been doing? Well, I've been working out. I've been doing all these boring things like going on diets and riding bicycles and jogging. Not lifting weights? Doing some weights, yeah. Yeah. You've got a very special guy working on a program with you? Yes. His name is Dan Isaacson, and he works with a fellow named John Barnett, and the two of them uh, put John Travolta together and uh, work with Linda Evans and also with other people in Hollywood like John Voight. Are they going to make you look like John Travolta? Well, I don't know if anybody can look like John Travolta <laughs> except John Travolta. Listen, stay as sweet as you are. Will you do that? Thank you, sir. Do you know that eight other people have actually played this role of uh, Mike Hammer's right. Mickey Spillane? That's right. And Please. Mickey Spillane himself Played, played it back in, what, 1961 or 61. Yes, Darren McGavin played it. A whole series. Of, have you seen the other performances? I've seen most of them. I haven't seen Biff Elliott or Robert Bray. Uh, but Ralph Meeker uh, was one of my favorite Mike Hammers. Well, uh, look, this is really Kevin Dobson is one of my favorites. Yeah. Biff Elliott played it in 53. Anthony Quinn played the role in 19... Well, I actually, we, that's not quite accurate. I, I, I thought it was, I thought it, that he had played it. He was in a Mickey Spillane movie. He played a character named Black, Johnny or Blackie or something. It wasn't yeah. Boston Blackie, but uh, it was like, a, it was a Mike Hammer character, but it wasn't actually Mike Hammer. Well, so there's, I'm really the eighth, I guess. At Ralph Meeker in 55, Robert Bray in 57, Darren McGavin. That was the series. Yeah, yeah. in 1958, Kevin, Do I'd forgotten, Kevin Dobson did it in 81, right, right. and Armand Asante in, in 1982. Right. It's amazing. You know, I, I think Spillane's novels have held up pretty well. Don't, don't yeah, I do too. I think that, uh, I think they really embody something about the American spirit that we all, we all like and identify with, and that is that it's the one, one man against the system. Uh, the one man who really has a moral sense of justice that we all identify with, that, that this will not tolerate the bureaucratic red tape and takes justice into his own hands. It's like Dirty Harry. It's exactly yeah. the same thing. Well, did you read these back in the 50s? Some of them, yeah, I did. But now you're really reading them. Well, I, mean, I did when we started. Yeah, now? absolutely, sure. Yeah, yeah I think that... Uh, the books are, 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 are pretty tough. I mean, I, we have not watered them down for television because we're not doing the books, really. We're doing, we're doing original scripts based on the characters in the novels. But, but aside from just the tough, hard-nosed aspect of the character, we also we try not to take himself too seriously and show a little bit of the romantic and the humorous side of his character as well. How old would Mickey Spillane be now? I think he's 65. He's still writing? Yes. He was writing children's books for a while. He's, he claims he's going to do another Mike Hammer. We'll see. I don't know. But he spends a lot of time uh, with uh, Light Beer, that, that gang going around and shooting those, those Light Beer commercials. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Stacy studied at Yale and was a very good student. But I understand you flunked a couple of courses. <laughs> How could you be a really good student and still flunk some? Well, I wasn't really a good student at Yale. I was, uh, they said you were. Really? Well, 
then how do I, then how come I flunked? Yeah. I don't <laughs> <laughs> do you remember what they were? They were acting classes. Oh, are point. you kidding? No, I'm not. And I think it had a lot to do with the fact that, that um, we had started our own. We didn't feel like we were getting enough. We were very ambitious, about five of us, we were there. And so we started our own classes, and we would work at our, on our lunch hours uh, three days a week. And I think the teacher felt that that was oh. a little bit, you know, out of line, as it probably was, but at least we learned something, you know. Yeah. Well, it depends upon, I think, what time you take the class, too. I remember I That's took, right. I had a French class at 8 o'clock in the morning, right. and I failed it. Yeah. I took the same French class the second semester at 3.30 in the afternoon, and I got an A. Well, that makes a big <laughs> difference. There you go. <laughs> These, they, they, the nebulous they out there say that you're a compulsive worker. Is there any accuracy to that? I think there is, yeah. I like to go to work every day. I think that comes from my theater background, actually. I think that has a lot to do with the fact that I just, I, for many years I was used to going down to the theater and doing eight performances a week. So I don't mind uh, going to work every day. In fact, I rather like it. I get very nervous and frustrated when I don't. Mm -hmm. And as an actor, there are those periods where you don't go to work every day. And if you're making a picture, for example, if you're not playing the starring role, if you're playing a subsidiary role, you know, there are those big gaps where you just, you know, sit around and chew your fingernails. At least that's what I do. Well, one of the best things I've ever seen you do is the Long Riders. Thank you. You and your brother and the Carradine boys. Yeah. And it was my understanding that you were going to make an, a sequel to we're it. We're still working you're on still it. still Because yeah. it took you ten years to do that. That's nine years, yeah. Yeah. We're still working on the sequel. It, it is the reason we've been delayed on it, aside from the fact that Westerns are yet again not very popular in Hollywood, uh, there's a claim that the uh, Long Riders didn't do very well at the box office, so we have to do I don't know. That. I don't understand that at all. I Creative really accounting. Don't. I really don't. Uh, now that the blue and the gray is behind you, right. did you see it when it ran on the network? I did. <laughs> what do you think when you see yourself? Do you like to look at yourself? Well, it depends. Uh, it, it, it really depends on the, on the project. Uh, I, I think now the, the, I've gotten to the point where when I see myself, I, look, I really don't see myself. I see the character, and I look rather objectively at that. I think that most of the time that that's what, what, my, what happens to me. I, um, for example, in The Blue and the Gray, when I saw it, I was really caught up in the story. I didn't really take time to objectify myself and say, oh, I don't look so good in that shot, or I do look good. I mean, yeah. I, but, I, but when I started out in this business, that's all I was preoccupied with. I would go to dailies and look at, you know, every detail of, of the, you know. And I still go to dailies once in a while to check on things, to make sure that, you know, that the character looks, what the character looks like, and also to see how the cameraman is treating uh, the event, whether he's, he's doing lots of, you know, shadows through the eyes, and which is what we, we have a lot of that in, in my camera, because it is a noir kind of uh, um, noir? noir. Black, black? Black, yes. You know, yeah. it's that, that with the, the louvered, windows and the cigarette smoke and the saxophones and the blues, you know, that's, 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 uh, that's a style that is, I guess, Bogart and, and the, you know, the, the Big Sleep and those, those kind of pictures uh, um, gave us. And I hope that we can do on my camera one day in black and white because I think that's really where it, it, it lives. I think that that's, that's the ultimate in the style of that, of that genre. There's a very sensual quality about you. That's what I, I that's what I see on the screen. That's nice to hear. Wow, he's something else. <laughs> he's Stacy Keach and he is Mickey Spillane's Mike Hammer. Watch him here on 1011 Strong. Thank you, Mr. Keach. Always a pleasure. Thank you. Stay tuned, 1011 Morning continues.